Hello, I'm Dr. David Richardson. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Southern California. Today, I'd like to talk about one of the misconceptions about symptoms of glaucoma. So, let's get going. So if you ask people what is lost with glaucoma, many will tell you peripheral vision. And all that, though that's true, uh, that's far from complete. Uh, both peripheral and central vision can be lost and are lost uh, in more advanced forms of glaucoma. Uh, but there's something else that is misunderstood, and that is the idea that early on with glaucoma, there are essentially no symptoms. And this is just not the case. Um, many of my patients with all stages of glaucoma will report to me the difficulty in seeing after initially moving from bright lights to dark lights. Now, this condition called delayed dark adaptation, uh, which is essentially the um, increased time it takes for the retina to adjust sensitivity when moving from high luminescence or bright lights to low luminescence or uh, low dark areas of lighting um, is something that's actually been researched for over 50 years. Now, the research has been ongoing and there are uh, newer studies that try to figure out uh, how this works, uh, how we can particularly uh, address it with treatments. Um, one of the more recent studies is one from the Collaborative Initial Glaucoma Treatment Study, CIGTS. It's a large study of uh, approximately 600 patients looking at the quality of life issues. And this was uh, upon initial diagnosis. So this is early glaucoma for the most part. And the most common, or, or some of the most common uh, symptoms that were noted in this study included uh, difficulty in extremes of lighting. So not just low lighting or transitioning from bright to light, low lighting, which was one of the symptoms that was quite common in the study, but actually extremes including bright light. Now, it gets even worse than that because another study looked at those who had ocular hypertension uh, without any evidence of glaucoma. So no visual field loss, no um, retinal uh, fiber loss, essentially just high pressures and even in these patients there was delayed light adaptation now this is particularly concerning because uh, if one has difficulty in low light situations or adapting from uh, bright to low light uh, this can impact one's risk of driving at night um, especially and maybe one of the reasons why many patients with glaucoma will voluntarily try to avoid driving at night. So the question of course becomes, what can be done about this? Uh, well, certainly to keep things from getting worse, uh, treating the glaucoma uh, by lowering the interocular pressure, as well as addressing some of the other uh, more um, holistic issues that I've discussed in other videos and will continue to discuss. Uh, these are all things that are worth doing in order to prevent this from getting worse. But in terms of trying to improve uh, the delayed dark adaptation or difficulty with extremes of, of lighting, <laughs> such as I'm having right here uh, as I drive through uh, a series of trees, uh, there's not a lot in the literature. Uh, there is, however, a recent study that looked at treating patients with macular degeneration who also tend to have issues with dark adaptation. Uh, in this study, uh, patients were uh, given lutein zeaxanthine, which is a naturally occurring substance uh, that occurs both in uh, vegetables, fruits, and importantly, the retina. Now, in this study, uh, half of the patients were not given a supplement uh, or they were given a placebo. I can't remember right now, but it was either a placebo or no supplement. And the other half were given 
uh, lutein zeaxanthine supplement. And after uh, a month of taking the supplement, uh, there was a noticeable improvement in those who took the lutein zeaxanthine supplement. So the nice thing about this is that lutein zeaxanthine uh, is a relatively inexpensive supplement that is also one without many uh, risks or side effects. So there, there's really no downside for most people to try some lutein zeaxanthine for a month or so and see whether or not it, uh, it benefits vision in the extremes of lighting or transitioning from uh, bright light to low light and low light to dark, low light to uh, bright light. Now, for those of you who would like to take a more natural form, meaning in, the, in your food source, uh, the good news is that lutein zeaxanthine is found in many uh, natural uh, sources, uh, vegetables and fruits uh, I mentioned. Uh, and for those who are into this, uh, this new kale craze, you'll be very happy to know that kale has one of the highest natural concentrations of lutein zeaxanthine of any uh, food source. Uh, twice as much as spinach does. Uh, so if you like spinach, uh, you know, you and Popeye can uh, feel good about that. Uh, but the kale is, is, is a great source. Um, other fruits and vegetables uh, have plenty in them as well. Collard greens, um, not a big fan of those myself, but um, there are lists online that, that you can take a look at. So I do generally recommend either uh, improving the dietary um, supplementation or uh, getting a supplement in a, in a bottle of uh, lutein zeaxanthine uh, from a, a reliable source, uh, Life Extension or uh, Paradise Herbs or, or two that I tend to recommend. And uh, I'll continue to recommend these supplements to my patients as a uh, low risk uh, but potentially a symptom improving treatment for issues with dark adaptation and extremes of light in both my patients with glaucoma and macular degeneration. So anyway, I hope that um, this was of benefit to you and that uh, you didn't find the glare too annoying. Um, sorry, but my uh, commute times right now in the fall are, are all pretty glary, uh, which uh, actually is apropos for today's topic of conversation. All right, have a great day and uh, We'll be chatting again soon if you'd like to come back.